am trying to get through some recently acquired books before summer book sale season. So there are quite a few book sales coming up, but I have quite a few recently acquired books that I haven't even talked to you about yet. This is going to be a ooh, ah, Little Free Library recently acquired books. Oh, that's way too dark. Most of these came from Little Free Libraries. Several I might have gotten from like a Goodwill or something like that. The first book is Like Water for Chocolate and I actually was looking for this book for the Linguathon and I couldn't find it um, but I found it in the Little Free Library in Tintin Falls, New Jersey. I like that one. It's right by some community gardens which is very cool. I don't know exactly what this book is about but I do know it is translated from Spanish and I also know that there was a movie made of this but I thought it was interesting that the book it says a novel in monthly and installments with recipes, romances, and home remedies. Next in Bradley Beach, New Jersey, I got Death at High Tide, which is a Jersey Shore mystery. I had never heard of this and I had no idea what it was about, but since it was a cozy mystery set on the Jersey Shore, I definitely wanted to pick it up. From Asbury Park, New Jersey, I got The Blind Contessa's New Machine by Carrie Wallace. I've never heard of this book, but I couldn't pass up this very cute cover and this very cute spine. So it's just got a really cute like a button spine. A book that I picked up, I think this was also in Asbury Park, New Jersey, was All the Birds Singing, a novel by Evie Wilde. I've heard Simon from Savage Reads talk about Evie Wilde before and I know that this is not the book that he really, really liked, but when I saw this E.B. Wilde novel, I wanted to pick it up. It's very short and looks pretty interesting, but again, I don't know what it's about. The pizza place that I work at has a pizza called The Beekeeper's Lament, so I could not resist getting this nonfiction called The Beekeeper's Lament, which is How One Man and Half a Billion Honeybees Help Feed America by Hannah Nordhaus. This was from a little free library in Keyport, New Jersey. I can't remember where I got Never Let Me Go, but I know that people love this book and I've been wanting to read some Ishiguro for a while. So when I saw this in a little free library, I snatched it up. I know that this book is multiple timelines and has a sci-fi element to it. I've never seen the movie, but I was happy to get this cover, which was not a movie cover. This was an annotated book that I picked up from a little free library. I really don't know what it's about. I got it only because of the title, which is A Guide for the Perplexed by E.F. Schumacher. This was another cover by, cover by, since I picked it up from a little free library, also in Keyport, New Jersey. It's called Bear, The Life and Times of Augustus Owsley Stanley III by Robert Greenfield. It is a nonfiction about this particular person, and he was prevalent in the 60s. I think he probably was like one of the kind of hippie drug people. So I don't know a lot about that time with um, the kind of drug and LSD set, so I would be interested in reading about that. I picked up A Month in the Country by J.L. Carr in a little free library in Asbury Park. This was a super short novel and I really like these um, New York Review Books editions. I think they're really cute, so I wanted to pick up some of those to read. At a little free library in Heightstown, New Jersey, we picked up Everybody Loves a Good Drought, which is stories from India's poorest districts. We actually ate Indian food there, and we were wondering about why such a large Indian population lived there, and then we were thinking about how we really didn't know much about India as a country, and then this nonfiction uh, vignette book popped up, so we picked it up. In Farmingdale, New Jersey, I picked up two very slim Dover thrift editions, one of Edith Wharton's Ethan Frome, which I have never read and I don't know anything about, but I didn't realize that it was under 100 pages, so I was like, if I can read a classic in under 100 pages, that sounds pretty cool. And I also got this book on utilitarianism because I thought that would also be an interesting subject to read in a very short book.
I haven't read any Carl Hyacin in a really, really long time, but I always remember liking his books that were set in Southern Florida. And this one has to do with one of his more eccentric characters. So I thought I might give it another try. Skink is kind of a transient guru sort of character in Hyacin's world. And I thought if anything was gonna pull me back into that bizarre crime world that this book might do. It. I can't remember where I got Octavia Butler's Dawn. I've only read one Octavia Butler book before, but I really, really liked it, even though it was quite disturbing. So when I saw this in a little free library, I definitely wanted to, to grab it. This was kind of another cover grab. It's called Heather the Totality by Matthew Weiner, and it is a very slim novel that I found in a little free library in Asbury Park, New Jersey. It's about parents and their obsession with their daughter, and although that's not the kind of book that I would usually like, I just really like this cover, and I just wanted to kind of take a look and see what it's about. If I'm not interested in it, I could always drop it back off. These covers kind of go together with the like face and the writing. This was definitely a cover grab. It is called 666, a novel, and it is by Jay Anson. This author is famous for the Amityville horrors, and I've never read any of his work, but when I saw this novel with this cover, I had to grab it. Lastly, this was not found in a free little library, but was bought at my local restore. It is called Zodiac, the Eco Thriller by Neil Stevenson. Now, I've never read any Neil Stevenson, but he is a renowned sci-fi author, and I thought this book obviously came out in the 80s or the 70s and it just had a very cool cover. He's wearing a Red Sox shirt. I think that if I didn't have book sales to go to, my acquiring of books has definitely slowed down, which is great. That's definitely one of my goals for the summer because I have been collecting more books than I have been reading, obviously, and I don't want to get so many books that I don't have time to read them all. And I don't want to get books that I don't plan on reading or I'm not super interested in reading. But those are all the recently acquired books I have right now, and I will be going to those book sales, so I will get more but for now, you've seen all the recently acquired books. Let me know what your favorite little free library is. Tell me where it is and tell me why you love it. Is it because it's super cute? Is it because it's on your way to work and you get to check it out every day? Is it because it always has a stock of good books? Let us know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much.